Hello everyone, it's Thumper, the Rabbit Rabbit. I'm back here with the uh, base I built as an example for uh, user requests. I think it was Bo yesterday to show how you could link together three HBHF sensors to have them open your loot room doors. I also set up another HBHF in here to trigger open some doors that are hiding turrets that are set to enemy only. That way, uh, you know, if it's not me coming in here, it, it's someone else. It won't open the, the loot room doors, but it will open the trap doors and hopefully motivate people not to steal my stuff. Uh, one of the people on my Discord, Clan D, uh, pointed out to me that there's two different ways to do this um, with what he calls a double blocker method. Um, and I wanted to show off the difference between the two examples for those of you who are wondering because in this particular scenario you could actually use both because the two circuits have two different purposes. Um, what Clandy refers to as a double blocker, let me switch over to schematics here, I'm going to refer to as a fail open circuit and that's what you see here. What I used in the base for the example video is what I would call a fail secure circuit. It's what you see here. And let me show you why these are different and why you would use them in different scenarios. So this obviously looks a little more complex because it is. It facilitates having uh, variable workloads that go through it and it needs um, a little bit more power depending on how many of them you're gonna stack because I'm going through OR switches. So in this case, what happens is power source comes in we need to split a couple units off to power HBHFs. And then we leverage the one single unit that would come out for a single person uh, triggering the HBHF sensor into one side of an AND switch so we can get the rest of the power, which needs to be enough to go to the series of OR switches and hopefully have one unit left over. If you've configured it correctly, there should always be enough going through any one of these and through these OR switches to send one unit to the AND. And the AND switch along with the power source that's going to run your outcome uh, would be enough to go through and power. In the case of that example, I'm speaking of the loot room side of the room. This is a good circuit to use for the loot room side because anytime you trigger an HBHF sensor, it sends power through that uh, affirmatively or positively tells this circuit to turn on and to open doors. So. Normally, the doors are closed, the power is off, and you have to trigger these HBHF sensors and send power through, and all of these components need to be working for any one of these in order to open the doors. If any one of these gets knocked out, if any piece of this, and the HBHFs are the things that are most likely to be exposed, if the HBHFs get knocked out, you just can't activate the circuit. There's no way of accidentally opening the doors because you just can't get power through anymore. So this is what I call a fail secure circuit in that if things go wrong, power goes out, HBHF gets blown up, or switch gets blown up, and switch gets blown up, whatever, um, the door is going to fail secure. They're not going to be able to get into your loot. It's not set up for them anyway, but... Um, there's, there's not a scenario by which you're going to accidentally open the doors here. Now, if we go to the fail open circuit, and the reason why uh, Clan D refers to this as a double blocker circuit is because you're using a blocker to block the main power into the outcome that you want to occur, and then you're using a chain of blockers to actually um, stop that <laughs> uh, so that power isn't on until you turn off this chain. Now it's simpler because since you can use the single unit of power out of the HBHF to activate the blocker, activating any one of these HBHFs breaks this circuit, which means the main blocker is no longer blocked and your power now goes through. In this case, I added a medium battery downline here uh, as the input to the main power source. Uh, so that this works even better and this is the scenario where I have turrets hidden behind doors Well, if the power gets knocked out, I don't want the turrets and doors to not open 
Uh, and if the HBHFs get shot out because they're exposed, I don't want the turrets to not open. I want the turrets and the doors, you know, the, the doors to open and the turrets to be powered if anything goes wrong until I have a chance to fix it. And that's what this battery is here for. As long as this battery and these three components are intact, then the doors will open and the turrets will be on until I can get back to fix whatever went wrong with the power source, with the HBHF sensors, with this chain. This is probably hidden away anyway. But this is a fail open circuit so that if something goes wrong, this gets turned on or the power gets cut somehow, the outcome is that it's going to switch to this backup battery and run all of my gear until I have a chance to fix it. So that's an example or two examples how even in this one building that, I, that I'm showing off here, you could use both of those circuits. You could use the fail secure, the one that doesn't work if anything gets knocked out, so that these doors cannot open and the loot is safe. And you could use that for a variety of things besides loot, but in this case it's loot doors. And then you can use the fail open circuit so that uh, these doors will open and turrets will power on and the trap will be set at least until your battery runs out. And that way you have some assurance that you have some time to get back to your base and fix some of this. And whoever comes in messing around is going to get shot. So uh, thank you to Clan D for pointing out this example. Um, I, I haven't actually done a build using a chain of blockers like this. I've done it with XOR switches, which is a little more expensive from a power perspective. Uh, this is obviously a lot simpler and cleaner to look at. So, um, and of course, most people are probably building trap bases, not automated loot rooms. So not a bad idea to leverage this type of scenario. Give yourself a little bit of redundancy, backup and control while simplifying the circuit and lowering your power demand a little bit. So there you go. Good luck, and don't suck.